Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about that tropical cyclone that could move into the Gulf of Mexico. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, how long do you think until we have our next tropical cyclone after this one? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look at the two-day graphical tropical weather outlook, and as you can see, we have a 40% chance of development over the next two days here. This is going to be our uh, easternmost one there, to just south of Mexico is the one we're talking about, the one that has a number one above the 40% chance. Let's take a look at that five-day outlook, and you can see it's the same exact chance, 40% chance of development over the same time period here. Uh, so we have basically an equal chance between it developing over the next two days or over the next five days. Usually that means that they are expecting that to occur within the next two days, uh, more likely than taking longer, but it could take longer as well. Now that's not the interesting part because it's actually pretty similar to how things were as of yesterday's video. We've talked about this storm probably about five times out of the last six videos. I've been talking a lot about this. Let's move over to the Atlantic side of things. Here's the two-day graphical tropical weather outlook, and no surprise here, we have no tropical activity expected within the next 48 hours. That's not very interesting, is it? Well, let's move on to the interesting part. The five-day tropical weather outlook, look at that. 30% chance of tropical development, and that's going to be west of the Yucatan Peninsula uh, and then north of Mexico. So basically, it's in the horseshoe there of the Yucatan Peninsula uh, and the rest of Mexico, where that storm is expected to move. Finally, we have the National Hurricane Center kind of confirming that this is a legitimate possibility. I expect these chances to go up, and I do expect this to creep into the two-day outlook eventually. I think they're expecting it to occur mostly around days four through five. So probably within the next two or three days, we will see this creep into the two-day outlook uh, and probably increase in odds on the five-day outlook. If it doesn't, if it decreases in odds, then likely it will not end up on the two-day outlook. My confidence is still rather low, so I don't want you guys to feel like I'm saying this is for sure going to happen or that there will be a tropical cyclone moving into the Gulf of Mexico. We are just tracking the overwhelmingly increasing odds of that occurring. This has been increasing ever since I started making these videos on this storm. We've been tracking favorable conditions in this area, uh, etc. for the past week or so. Here is the satellite imagery for this actual system as of yesterday. So keep a mental note of this because we're going to compare it to today in three, two, one. And in my opinion, it looks a little bit more organized. We have multiple clouds that are taller. They're in the, you know, grays, whites, and pinks there, whereas we only had one yesterday. So I think this is increasing in its organization, but really as this is right along the coast of Mexico, I think it will struggle uh, unless it heads over Mexico into the Gulf of Mexico, at which it would basically have an easier time developing because it's just going to be in the open water, ready to just develop freely after that point. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on, and we're going to move on to the probability of tropical depression, probability of tropical storm from the European Ensemble model, and then we're also, in a minute, going to take a look at the spaghetti models, the intensity guidance, and also the vorticity. Now here is our probability of tropical depression here, and the interesting thing is you can see it's basically located over the middle of Mexico, indicating that this can either develop south or north of that location. There is a 90 to 100% chance of tropical depression winds there in the middle. Uh, so we are, according to the European model, expecting a very high probability that this one at least becomes a tropical depression between the 12th and the 15th. Now as we take a look at the 16th, through the 19th, you can see that we get kind of two separate areas. So I think that there is a chance at this point that this does split into two, one staying in the Pacific and then one developing there in uh, the Atlantic. We have about a 40 to 50% chance there in the Southern Gulf. And then it looks like a 60 to 70% chance there in the Eastern Pacific. Now between the 17th and the 20th, the probability of tropical storm is equal on both sides, 10 to 20% there in those two purple areas indicating there is a chance that this one also becomes a tropical storm but of course we already knew that uh, that's not new news by this point for us here uh, we've been tracking this one like i said for days be sure to subscribe if you want up-to-date weather information by the way because we have been tracking this one uh, quite religiously actually we've been tracking this one since it was a very slim probability and that's what that's what we do here really we, we talk about the things that are like very low probability because there's always the chance that it does develop and most people are interested in that because you can't really find that information 
much other places. That's what makes direct weather different. That's the type of information I like to bring. Here is our spaghetti model guidance. We're going to move from the GEFS model or GFS ensemble model, that is, the Canadian ensemble model, and then we're going to just take a look at all the different models. So this is going to give us a nice palette of different opinions. All right, first off, GFS ensemble model. Kind of just keeps it in the area, not really moving around too much, uh, and it stays pretty weak here. So the GFS ensemble model does not have this one developing quite a lot at all. Here is the Canadian ensemble model though, and this one takes this many different places. You can see one takes it up to Louisiana, a couple have it hitting Mexico, and then quite a few have it moving up the coast, uh, kind of towards Baja, Mexico there. So we have multiple different opinions here according to the Canadian ensemble model. Uh, and then here is our, basically just all the models. This is all the different models, and as you can see, they all have it heading basically eastward. Uh, then northeastward and then kind of northwestward uh, is the mean average of all of these and they, most of them have it hitting mexico at some point so it's hard to say but you notice none of these take it into the gulf of mexico this is why my my i'm kind of thinking this one is actually an increased chance of kind of uh this one either sticking in the pacific or fizzling out and then having it kind of redevelop or have a new one develop there in the southern gulf uh, maybe not the same exact system now, what we're going to do here in a moment is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at the intensity guidance, which is basically going to be like a spaghetti model on a chart that's going to show us if this one's going to be a tropical storm, hurricane, stay below tropical storm status. It's going to tell us all that information. And then we're going to take a look at that cyclonic vorticity according to our models. All right, now here we are taking a look at that intensity guidance. And as you can see, we're at about 25 knots. There's expected to be some weakening before there's some strengthening. Uh, but eventually, by the time we're reaching hours 48, hour 72, we are kind of increasing there. Uh, and we eventually, according to more than half of these models, believe it or not, eventually reach tropical storm status uh, within the next 96 hours, or at least within the next 108 hours. The ship model takes us all the way to a category one, but that is a, basically an outlier at this point. There's only one model showing that, and that is that ship model. None others uh, are showing that at this point. Point, so we want to take that with a grain of salt whenever we see something standing alone like that. Let's go ahead and take a look at that vorticity according to our European model. Uh, and things get pretty interesting. I'm going to walk you through this. This basically is just showing us the spin in the atmosphere on a very large scale. So things like tropical cyclones would show up on this. I uh, hope that makes sense. Or normal low pressure systems would as well. Uh, and this is by the time we're reaching uh, this afternoon, Saturday, 18Z, which would make out to be about 2 or 3 p.m. here. Now... In the southern Gulf, we do have some energy there, also south of there, in south of Mexico. You can see that is our area of invest right now, in the, in the red being indicated there. By Monday, we have two systems. We have some energy there in the southern Gulf, but we also have one there south of Baja, quite a bit south of Baja. Uh, so we see two areas of energy, and I think that's what's kind of causing me to believe there could be splitting of the two systems. And by the time we are reaching... Uh, next Saturday at about the morning hour, that's going to be June 19th, you can see that one is hitting Louisiana by that point. Uh, and then we also have some energy still left over in the eastern Pacific. So that's kind of leading me to believe that this could just completely split off, like I said. Here's the GFS model too, and it has a split system as well. We can see a lot of those reds going on in the eastern Pacific, but also in the Gulf of Mexico, right in the middle of it there north of the Yucatan Peninsula. So that one also thinks that this one will likely split off. So things are changing rapidly, things are evolving, but I'm gonna to continue to bring this information on this tropical cyclone as long as you guys are interested and still wanna see these videos. So leave a like, leave a comment down below if you want me to keep making these tropical cyclone update videos. For today's confidence tab, we've upgraded from a three to a four because now we have that area in the Gulf of Mexico indicating the National Hurricane Center is on board with that idea. That is increasing my confidence to a four out of six. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think this one will develop or not? And James Marr said, yes, I believe it has a slight to moderate chance of developing. I certainly agree there. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nigel, Lerda Pan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Villegas, Gary, John Colisi, Dwight Phelan, and Stephen 
Cronenthal. If you would like to be a part of this Patreon entry today, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms one and Catbite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button. Be sure to leave a comment down below to help that YouTube algorithm out. And also be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.